Here's a real high class game. It's on! <laughs> Cuphead is a fantastic game that I love to no end if my 200 sub specials taught you anything. And after beating every boss in expert difficulty and even S-ranking a few, I felt it's time to give him the countdown treatment. By the way, congrats to my old pal CCA Productions for guessing the video. Before I get to the list proper, I want to rank the ones that didn't make it from 11 to 19. I found that I liked a few bosses more than I thought after experting on them all, and a few I liked a bit less. Oh yeah, if you've seen an S near the name, it means I S-ranked the boss while recording. If you disagree with my rankings, feel free to let me know your favorites in the comments section below. This list will get red hot. Let's do this thing! Ribbit. My first playthrough, Ribby and Croaks were the first boss to give me a lot of trouble, but I did have a lot of fun fighting them. I really like how they reference various parts of Street Fighter. They're dressed like Ryu and Ken, and Ribby does a variation of the Hadouken in Phase 1. But don't get distracted by cool referencing, this boss is pretty tricky. In Phase 1, keep your screen clear. You would not believe your eyes. But Croak spits out literal fireflies. Keeping those on screen will make dodging the Hadoukens much harder than they needs to be. When phase two starts, the two will stand at opposite sides of the screen and gain new attacks. Ribby claps his gloves and spawns... Sega Saturn logos? And Croaks will turn into a fan to hinder your dodging. Honestly, this is the easiest part of the boss fight. I never got here once during my recording for the S rank. But things get really weird once phase three rolls in. I tried, alright. The frogs fuse into an invincible slot machine that shoots deadly coins at you. Holy crap, Nico, BBQ is right all along. Harry slapped the lever and one of three animals will show up on the slots indicating what you have to avoid. And this is where the boss becomes vulnerable. There's always something going on and that's what makes this boss so interesting and fun. Pretty good way to start the list if you ask me. When Classy Reviews did his double top 5 on Cuphead bosses, he went into how important the first boss of the game is, and I completely agree with his explanation. And if you ask me, no first boss does the job better than the Root Pack. Man, VeggieTales does not look like how I remember it. Seeing as these are the first bosses, they don't have much going on, so how'd they make it above Ravine Croaks? Despite not being as challenging or complex, I found the Root Pack more fun and more impactful. This is the boss that pretty much teaches the player how to play the game, jumping over attacks and parrying, dodging and or parrying attacks from above, and keeping your screen clear as well as baiting homing attacks. But after the big update, something really interesting happened. This boss got a secret phase. Once you make Sal tonight's big loser, yes that's the potato's official name, Sal's Butter, don't attack all of the onion. He'll actually go back down, but in his place, a scrapped boss phase will come and chase you. Sure he's easy to dodge if you keep your arena clear, and he goes down rather easily, but still, that's pretty cool. But the main reason this boss isn't any higher is because it's very easy. In my opinion, the second easiest boss in the game behind Goopy. I know that's to be expected of a first boss, but on my first playthrough, I only died to these guys once. What fucks, but okay. Callate. If you ever end up playing this game, this boss will do a great job easing you in. Funny how he went from the first boss all the way to the final boss. <laughs> The devil is not someone to be messed around with. If you are not on your A-game, you ain't lasting 5 seconds against the guy. The devil is tough. Phase 1 will toss you around if you aren't careful. He can morph into different animals to attack you and summon fireballs or... bubbles for some reason. Meanwhile, little demons run across the floor and also hurt you. Watch the background to know where they'll come from. Nice job, you made it this far. Stay out of the middle. Jump down the hole to find... Wow. This is terrifying. Rated E10 plus my now crispy keister. Pro tip, the spread shot shreds this boss. But that's assuming you're good at dodging the axes he spams like a Belmont, irony at its finest, as well as the fiery poker chips that rain down. Attack him enough here and he gets super peeved and deletes two of your footholds in favor of two chunky demons that spit out skulls. Also, above you, bats that'll spin at you. This is easily the hardest phase of the bout, but it's all worth it to see him cry salty and parryable tears. This entire boss rocks. But I feel some parts in phase one could be toned down. The goat clap feels a bit too quick to dodge unless you have a super card or are good at dashing. And the five fireballs attack is super annoying to dodge and parry. But other than that, the boss is super fun. A devilishly good time. No lo siento. <laughs> I kinda wonder what the play was about before Cuphead and Mugman interrupted. 
Right off the bat, I love the set piece of the fight taking place on a stage show. As someone who loves working in theater, this was a total treat, but we're just getting started. Despite being slightly on the easy side, Sally has a lot to offer. She'll throw a fan that sticks to the ground, spin at you, teleport and drop on you, and sometimes blow a kiss that you can parry. But that's all in phase one. During the second act, <laughs> she'll drop mouse toys from a parasol and her children will drop milk on you. Is it wrong that I find it funny you can shoot them? Phase 3 really shakes things up. Now she's some sort of cardboard goddess that can summon the elements, which is a combination of cool and hilarious. Especially the big wave attack, but this phase is actually one big reference to Final Fantasy, specifically Kefka from 6. Sadly, the last phase isn't anything too special. You just shoot Sally while dodging her parasol chasing you, and the roses that the audience throws. Bummer. But S-ranking her can prove to be pretty tricky, as parry opportunities are few and far between. One last thing, they added a secret phase to this boss too! Hey, that sounds cool, how do you activate it? You murder an innocent man. Oh. They actually put in a scrapped animation for Sally and it changes the play's story, though her having the toys here makes less sense. The third phase adds the husband and a new attack that's rather tricky to dodge in tandem with everything else. The only real problems are that it's fairly easy and the music is sadly forgettable. Regardless, this boss is far from a flop. Yar, they're on the horizon! Oh <laughs> no, it's Captain Scrubbabub! <laughs> Man, this one's a fun one. I already went into why I love Brownie Beard's design in the 200 subspecial, but that's far from the only good part of this boss. You're not only fighting the pirate, but the ship and his different sea friends. This boss heavily emphasizes taking your surroundings into account. From the beginning of the bout, this barrel hangs out above the dock you're standing on. Watch its face. Once it looks down, it'll drop the moment you get under it. Later on, the ship will start spitting out cannonballs. Think ahead while fighting and dodging so you don't get trapped and end up forced to take a hit. The different animals Brandy Beard can call on also work like this. The shark takes up a good amount of room on a dock, the squid darkens your screen if you get hit by his ink, and let the four dogfish run across the dock. Oh! Did I mention all this goes on at the same time? Well, Brandy Beard can only call on one sea animal at a time, you have to dodge a lot at any given moment. Eventually, you'll damage the boss enough to where the ship itself gets fed up and starts fighting you itself. It can shoot whatever the heck these things are, and the giant screw you laser. You can parry it, but I wouldn't recommend it because the barrel's still up there. However, you don't shoot the ship itself. You shoot the uvula. This game can get weird, okay? This last phase is cool and all, but it's pretty easy once you know where to stand and jump and not get trapped by the laser and barrel. Those beginning phases are what really sell it for me. The various traps and obstacles keep you on your toes, and the fact that Briny Beard is at the top right corner means you have to jump or angle your shots well. Now this is a treasure worth digging up. I'll be honest, I don't enjoy the play mechanic a whole lot. It feels weird to control, at least to me, and you don't get a wide variety of weapons and charms to use. Heck, only one plane boss made the top 10 at all. Oh, who lives in the ocean near Inquilla 3? Calamaria! An amazing and challenging fun boss is she! Calamaria! If not looking at Google is something you wish. Calamaria! Then dodge your attacks that come from the fish! Calamaria! Okay, okay, I'll stop. Cal is probably the most well-known boss in this game, for reasons that Gardevoir can relate to. Ignoring that, we have one heck of a fun boss fight. The main thing about this boss is dodging two attacks at once. Being a mermaid, more specifically a siren, she can call upon various sea creatures to help her. Huh, deja vu. However, she has way more creatures at her disposal than the captain. Pufferfish, turtles, and a seahorse for underneath the cups, or two fish guns and these scurvy spooks for a horizontal. But that's all in phase one. In phase two- oh god, that looks painful! She turns into a Gorgon with a Medusa stare. Now you gotta watch out for these eels that shoot electric pellets that can get quite tricky to dodge. All of this might have been tough before, but it gets even more so in the final phase. Only her head floats, but her hair snakes can spit skull bubbles that you gotta dodge, along with the spiked walls. And keep in mind, she can still petrify you. This entire boss was a sight to behold. Her design is cool, her fight is fun, and it's tough as nails. Let's see the salty spittoon top this. I still can't believe this boss's music made it into Smash. The final threat of the first dial is easily the most fun. The biggest thing to keep in mind with this fight is to keep your screen clear. Cagney will fire seeds that sprout into flying enemies you have to take out, or you can parry the pink ones and not worry about them at all. He also has the jump scare attack and the magic hands to dodge. All this sounds pretty simple, but can easily overwhelm you if given even the slightest chance. Do enough damage here and he'll plant his roots on the floor, meaning you have to jump on the platforms to make sure you can finish him. He'll use said roots to disable one or two platforms at a time, as well as spit these pollen puffs that'll distort your screen if you get hit. Now that's a clever reference. Sure, all this is rather easy in execution, but dang is it a lot of fun throughout. I also love his little idle animation. I don't know what dance this is, but sometimes I do it when I'm bored. 
Fitting how someone whose favorite Pokemon is grass type loves the plant boss. Word of advice. Don't mess with King Dice. Don't mess with me. Man, this is one musical episode. The penultimate boss of Cuphead is a fan favorite for a darn good reason. It plays like no other boss in the game. Remember Black Stage from Gunstar Heroes? Well, King Dice sure does, and modeled his craps table around it. Each number represents a boss you have to take down. Which one you face is determined by how well you parry the die. Despite being based on a casino, you know, the land of the lucky, this entire fight is very consistent. The bosses are all assigned to the same number each fight, and the only change between runs is where the extra health is. Speaking of which, the mini bosses are a lot of fun and have a pretty cool theme behind them. Some are based on casino games like Pip and Dot or Chep's Bat Again, and others are based on other unhealthy habits like the Tipsy Troop. If you don't time your die parries just right, you could end up fighting every single mini boss in one session. That would take forever. Do it faster than your showers. Hey! Do you know how hard it is to choose a song in there? Take off at the speed of sound Bright lights and colors all around All culminating in the fight with Dice himself Assuming you don't land on start over King Dice puts your parrying skills to the true test Or you could be like me and use the invincibility super Sometimes it feels a bit cheap as to whether or not the parry registered But it's still super fun regardless Funny how the right hand man upstages the devil himself Fun fact, before I played this game, I thought this would be my favorite fight. I was kinda right. All aboard the hype train! The Phantom Express is the last of the soul contracts, and they put up quite the fight. You're chasing the train itself on a cart, and you can change its position by parrying the left and right switches, but be careful! These flying pumpkins drop... Pez? on the switches and killing these ghosts in phase 3 drops a pink skull. You have to take a lot into account, and I haven't even gotten to the four threats of the train. Blind Spectre throws eyeballs you can shoot to get rid of. He's rather simple if you keep to the right. Phase 2 introduces the Trans Conductor, who slams his hands on parts of the track in hopes of crushing you. Keep in mind, the pumpkins are still in town trying to screw you up. After him are the Lollipop Ghouls, who used to be called the Blaze Brothers. But why? They spit lightning! They attack one at a time, and during this phase you need to take out both heads to advance. But my favorite part is phase 4. The head of the train is pretty miffed that we survived and grows legs, yet grows legs for its wheels, and chases us. It can shoot bone rings out of its nose that can travel pretty quickly, and as if that weren't enough, look who's back! You can't attack the train right away. You parry the tail light to reveal the heart, but watch out! That open door lets fireballs shoot out of the train. Bottom line, this fight is fantastic. All four phases are fun and interesting, the music's great, I love the concept, and it can get pretty difficult. But we still have one last stop. You know what? Y'all are just mean. Grim Match Stick's awesome. I get the feeling this video is about to get flamed, but let me explain why this is my favorite boss in Cuphead. First of all, his attacks are fun to dodge and parry, even if there's few opportunities to parry. I also love the various creative ways they have him shoot fire. He spits meteors in phase 1, fire minions walk across his tongue in phase 2, and in his Hydra form, the fire bubbles he spits split into four bubbles when shot. Also, Hydra form! If it's wrong to think this is awesome, I don't want to be right. As for his other attacks, he'll try to strike you with his tail in phase 1, and in phase 3, the middle head will turn into a literal flamethrower that splits the screen. A lot of people complain that the RNG cloud platforms are frustrating to deal with, but honestly, I can count the number of times it screwed me up on one hand. And even then, it was my fault for jumping the gun, so to speak. I may not have spent as much time talking about how much fun Grimm is as much as the others on the list, but I just can't find the words to express how much I love Grim Mashtick as a boss. His music rocks, the fight's a blast, and just the right amount of difficult, none of the phases drag on. <laughs> and it's not only my favorite puppet boss, but possibly my favorite boss in all of gaming. I'm the Sonic Sceptile Warrior, and I cannot wait for Delicious Last Course or the Netflix cartoon to come out. See you in the next video. Goodbye!